Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric. This being a show where we talk about crime dramas that I watch. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about episode two of Narco Saint. Great episode. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. So immediately picking up after last episode, we have uh, Igun uh, being arrested, and obviously he gets sent off to wait St. Martin, and... Obviously, he has a little bit of money on himself that he's trying to call a lawyer. He actually tried to get, like, the Korean embassy to, like, kind of step in. But he has to fill out the paperwork. And it's like, oh, so what am I supposed to do? Just chill and jail it in? Because I'm actually in jail right now. So he calls his wife. He's trying to make sure that she's okay. The kids are okay. She wants to put the house up to, like, get the money needed to pay for a lawyer. But obviously, it's like... He doesn't want to threaten the life. He doesn't want to uproot his children in the life that, you know, they've kind of been accustomed to in the life they live. Once again, he doesn't want to go back to where he started off at as where him and his wife were at until they moved into this new home. It's like, I don't want to go backwards. I want to move forward, but I, I want to make sure you're all okay and taken care of. So don't sell like the house to try and... um compensate for that because obviously that's just going to be even more debt they're going to be into so he's he's like I'm, I, you know me I'll, I'll I've typically figure it out but uh he ends up getting visited by uh Choi who is a um what was it an agent from the national in, uh intelligence uh service and I love that it's like hey yeah just pretend like we're old friends so no one's suspicious so he ends up explaining about exactly who Pastor Gion is. Now, I figured as much like, okay, so I, I at first I was like, okay, who was behind all of that last episode? Like, it had to be Gion, especially because he, the look on his face, plus um, him calling someone at the very end there. We find out that, yo, uh, Pastor Gion's been in the game for a hot minute. For like 18 years he's been in this game. It's, and specifically started off in meth. I was like, yo. I mean, I guess this is definitely getting that Breaking Bad type of vibe, but it's almost like we're on the opposite end of the Breaking Bad situation. It's interesting, too, because like the show's taking place like 2008, 2009, which is when, obviously, Breaking Bad first premiered was 2008. So it's like, it's just, it, there is a lot of interesting parallels to make there. But he was originally selling meth. He, like, the like group he was a part of like well he was leading got busted he eventually kind of disappeared and kind of started his racket over again somewhere else basically he was like conning like he's a he's a, an amalgamation of everything he's a drug dealer he's a con man he convinced a whole bunch of rich people to invest in a corporation um, that was never going to be a thing he was just going to take all those people's money and he basically spiked their drinks with meth and um uh, and basically got them so addicted to meth that they didn't even care. And was like, all right, we'll give you whatever money you need. Just give us meth. And it's like, got them so addicted. And they would just pay whatever amount of money they could to him. So that's how he was making a killing in this regard. Until um, some form of the National Intelligence Service or something. Was it National Intelligence Planning? Which I guess that's a completely different section than what Choi works for. I'd be a little suspicious. I don't like, we saw those events, but... But Choi kind of like, at least when it seemed like he was explaining things to Ingu, it didn't seem like he told him everything. But maybe he was telling him everything. Like, because obviously, like, we're seeing stuff as he's explaining everything to Ingu. But part of me wonders could it be like he left out certain details? All he said was like, oh, yeah, like, circumstances made it so he couldn't stay in Korea. That's all he really said. I mean, I guess you don't want to get into all the nitty gritty details, but it's like, does, was it even like we saw him killing that later on that na uh, national um, intelligence person? But it's like, did he explain that to Ingu or not? Because that, like I said, because I thought he was kind of a small time type of guy that has some connections and stuff. It's like, no, he's big time because once again, he's been doing this for like 18 years. And we've also seen that he is because he has his presence of like, right, he's keep up the appearance of a pastor. You know, it's not only just like, I mean, I guess you have to be kind of like a, a very like terrible person to try and balance like, oh, being a pastor with like the do of uh, also being a drug dealer, but like being a pastor is your front because it's not even just being a regular pastor. He's kind of the pastor uh, in charge of a cult, which is buck wild to think about. Uh, also, like, this episode really leans into how violent this show is. Like, when he was captured by the National Intelligence Planning, and they were 
beating the ever living shit out of him. Even like I guess like so he couldn't run away, like cause his pants are pulled down to his legs. So I guess so like even if he got up, he couldn't fully like. But like they were beating the ever living shit out of him. And then he also was getting uh basically extorted by the main guy that was in charge. I was like, cool. Uh, you're gonna give me whatever. How much money did you make? Cool. So you're gonna give me that. So. He had to start over, and that's when this pastor stuff started happening, and he was kind of still doing his thing, kind of like spiking like like the, the wine, kind of like the blood of Christ stuff, and getting people's money. Um, but then, oh, home dude came, hand out yet again, and it's like, damn, what am I going to do? This bastard keeps like... Coming to take my money, no matter how, because no matter where I go, he's he's got you know governmental resources to track me down, and it's like right, like who am I gonna like go and complain to? This guy is a a, a government worker, like who who am I gonna complain to in this time? And uh, finally, uh, Gian ended up snapping and ended up strangling the dude. And once again, like showing like oh like he can get his hands dirty if he needs to. That because I guess it's like considering like the small starting he has, like he scraped his way to the top. Not once, not twice, three times at the very least. So it kind of showcases like he is willing to do whatever. Once again, getting his hands dirty too. Because he feel like that would be something Chin would do. But like knowing like the pastor, uh, because I think that makes it even like the thing is he tries to pretend like, oh, I'm so above it all. Like I'm a great guy. Like, ah, amen, blah, 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 blah. But I guess it's like, right, he's like a completely insane cult leader. So it's like, you kind of like balance that with him being a drug dealer too. It's like, man, you you are wearing multiple criminal criminal hats, my friend. So that's wild. But he ended up needing to get out of Korea because of all of this. He needed to start off somewhere and where no one would um, ever know his face. So, and he ended up going to uh, Suriman and... Um, that's the place he could start over. Small population, no one knowing who he is, and he built up his empire. I mean, he happened to be going at the same time that a General Delano had basically staged a coup, and it's like, cool, like, we can work together, we can sway things to our way. Obviously, Chin was already kind of doing his thing, but working with, uh, Jian working with Delano, they basically wiped out every other small gang. I'm assuming Chin's the only, like, I guess, like, it seems like the past, uh, Pastor Gion and, uh, Chin are the main two in, in, uh, um, this is, like, this is their squad. Like, I, all the other small gangs probably have been wiped out if they haven't already been folded into one of the others. So either some of them might have folded into Gion's group or maybe others folded into Chin's group, but, yeah. And so that's where it's kind of like, alright. Because once again, I knew there was like a level of respect, but I still didn't realize he was like, the way um, Choi put it, it's like, yo, he's the kingpin of drugs in um, Suriman because he's running, like, with Delano, it's like, right, they will stay, uh, the Ch uh, Chin and um, his gang will stay with meth. You get complete and 100% say on cocaine, so that becomes his avenue. So he's got a, he's got the government, he's got the police, he's got the army on this side. So he definitely has probably way more, like, he comes a lot more armed to the teeth than even Chin does. So it kind of, it shows, it's not even, it's... It's not an even situation. It's Gion being like, yeah, I'll let you have the scraps. I'll let you stay in your little lane, but, you know, don't... That's why, like, Chin kind of, like, kind of, like, tiptoed around him last episode. It's like, he seemed like he was a big deal, but once again, he... I didn't reckon, realize how much of a big deal he is. And once again, considering the small background that he came from, and I guess, once again, that makes him that much more dangerous because he's fought tooth and nail to get where he is, and he's not willing to lose it all, so... So upon hearing all about this, uh, Ingu also finds out about um, Iyongsu, and it is kind of like I worried well, he died. Because he'd actually been contacting Ingu about, like, hey, I've been asking around, turns out Pastor Gion is kind of a drug dealer. And I guess he was asking too many questions, or it's like, right, um, they already sent Ingu to jail. Um... I'm assuming he had to be a part of that, you know, to continue to control, like, the police and everything. He had to have done that. Like, why not just kill, uh, Inyong kill him like you did Inyongsu? But the way it turns out later on, it's like, 
at least Chin says, like, oh, it was the army that did that potentially. So I guess maybe uh, Gion had nothing to do with him directly going to prison. It's like, right, you still, like, use his skates as a means to uh, smuggle drugs. I mean, cocaine specifically, but maybe he had no direct... Like, maybe he was calling, like, Delano to be like, yeah, our attempt to, like... Um, find a different uh, drug route, like, blew up in our faces, so. And so, now, Choi wants Ingu to work for them, to be their insider, to take him down, because there is, that's why um, Jion picked uh, a place like Suriman, uh, because there are no, uh, God, what's the word I'm looking for? Extradition with Korea, so they can't do anything to him, and he doesn't leave uh, Suriman, uh, Suriname, so they can't really do anything about it. But the plan is to get Ingu to get closer to him, get him to start selling to the U.S., because then the U.S. has a thing where it's like, oh, we can go into any country without, once you've, like, crossed the line and start dealing, like, stuff in the U.S., the U.S. can bring in, um, uh, the DEA can come take you down, even without having to get, they don't need to get permission from uh, Suriname to, you know, do anything, so that's kind of the plan, and Ingu's like, yo, I better get paid for it, I was on my way to, like, 500 mil when this was all said and done, um, so I need you to make sure that I get paid, and so he's gonna get 200,000 up front, and then 300,000 a moment, um, Gion ends up going down and it's like this way he can make sure that he takes care of his family uh, but I do love like him having to play the role of a drug dealer and I don't remember if I talked about this during the, my uh, watch list I might have cut it out I don't remember but I definitely feel like I, I, I was thinking it at the time watching the trailer this definitely feels like it's one of those stories of like when you play a role long enough eventually it no longer be, it's no longer acting it kind of becomes who you are so you could definitely see Ingu starting this off with the best of intention like oh I want to get revenge Revenge for my friend that died. I also want to get money so that my family's taken care of. I know, you know, just in general, I want to get back at this bastard for using me and putting me in this position and getting me locked up. All that, right? But eventually, it's like, mm, that money, that power, and that position, eventually it will, you know, get to you. You know, you might go full Walter Whiteness, you know, so. That's what I'm curious about with Ingu's story by the end of this. Will he kind of find himself on that route or will he just kind of know, like, no, I will always remember what I'm fighting for. This is just about pay. Like, I will never slip down this route because I have too much riding on this. My family back home. Because he can't even tell his wife, like, what's going on. And she, um, she's worried, but he's like, it's going to be okay. Because they are going to do the money in installments, but it's going to be like, it's, he's like, all right, how about, 40 mil for five months because he's like, I'm not going to spend an entire year here with this whole operation. So for about five months, it's kind of like the timetable. Send 40. We'll get 30 to my family and then 10 will go to a young Su's, uh family. You know, because he's like, I'm pretty sure they're struggling too. Which that was very heartbreaking when he eventually went back to uh, their place, um, their operate, their place of operation where they were, you know, um, staying at. Um, and, um, Suriname, and he found his buddies, uh, he saw Young Su's uh, GED mathematics, and you're like, oh, dude, and then there's a picture of him and his family, it's like, it, 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 it was, I think, a nice reminder of, like, this is what I'm fighting for, it's like, it's not like he dragged his buddy into this, but he is the one that kept kind of, I mean, they were, truth be told is, he actually did want to tell Pastor uh, Gion what was up, it was actually Young Su, and once again, Young Su's the one that kind of dragged him into all of this. But it's still like, no, he was trying to help me out, and I appreciate it. It's just like we just happened to get involved with the wrong person, and they just kind of went super sideways. Kind of no fault of their own. It is just a hundred percent on uh, Gion, but nevertheless. But getting back to it, I did like him having to play the role of the drug dealer, like you know, having to be super hard, like in uh prison and you know because one of the people there is one of Gion's people one of the, like what was it like one of his uh, I don't think we got a name but just like oh his bodyguard from Nigeria and so 
Uh, him also, you know, it's like, right, it's prison, so you gotta be tough. So he gets into a fight with some guy, because the guy's like, oh, you're stepping into our drug territory. He laid that guy out, and him kind of dishing orders to everybody about, like, okay, you know, he's got to certify himself. He's got to make... It, because it's got to, I guess it's like, you got to make it seem like, oh, he got out because of his own connections. Like, without letting it be known that obviously he's working with the NIS. But it's like, right, with enough money and sway and connections, he kind of moved product on his own, kind of made a name for himself in the prison and stuff. And I love that while he's like like doing that thing with, uh, you know, exercising his hand, he's reading reports from his children at the same time. I'm like, obviously, that's kind of leaning into that little bit of that stereotype. It's like, hey, I might be in prison and great that my kids don't know, but I want to make sure they're doing good. And it's like, all right, his son's like, all right, doing great. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Gets to his daughter. She needs improvement except for physical education. He's like, okay, we, we can work with that and I think it's so cute later on he's like oh you're doing really good in physical education he's like now you keep going on and you make sure that's like the career path you're going down and she's like okay and because she's really good at swimming and twice um uh, uh, what's it uh taekwondo so I really I thought that was really cute I also love his interaction with Choi when uh, he first got out of prison Choi's like hey you did good work and he's just looking at him and he's like you're so awkward. It's like, I get it, you were trying to play friends, but it's like, man, do better job of acting. Oh my God. And Troy was just almost kind of like, you yeah, know, whatever. You know? So, it kind of introduced him to at least one of his colleagues, but it does seem like it is obviously like a whole team. I wonder how, t is that, like, the four or five people that are part of that team, I wonder, is that all that in the know about this whole thing or like he probably has to report to his superiors but because of this whole thing it makes you wonder are they going to keep it super tight lip or not probably not they're probably like letting their bosses know but they're like the only ground team that's there for right now and obviously they're telling um ingu it's like right if you need to run go ahead um like run to the u.s embassy and you'll be protected but he's like i can't run if i run i don't get paid so you know Got to do this for my family's sake, no matter how much danger I put myself in. So, ends up meeting up with uh, Chen. And I think, luckily for um, Ingu, once again, I brought it up last episode, he does have a really good head on his shoulders, and so he has to kind of act, like, really tough. I mean, I guess, like, being in prison and kind of playing this role has really, like, once again, you kind of have to lean into it, so he's probably has toughened up a lot more, like... Um, after everything, so it's like, hey, let's do business, and it's like, oh, I do meth, it's like, no, we should shift over to cocaine, it's like, why would I want to join up with you, how do I know you're not sitting here by, like, Pastor, uh, Gion, so, while he's busy over there, like, chainsawing a dude's foot up, which later on, they're like, yeah, he's like, yeah, hang it up in Chinatown, so they know, like, what happens to this loyal people, and he, he super does, and, like, no, like, the guy's up there hanging up high, no hands, no feet, and everyone's going about their day like it's nothing, it's like, well, it's his territory, so everyone in that situation, that place, knows what's what, so it's kind of like a day occurrence, it's just kind of like, I guess it's like uh, you, how you psychologically deal with it. It's just you pretend like you like we know what area we live in. We know who kind of runs things here. So it's just like, right, it's a reminder. But also it's like just, just living your life like it's nothing. It's kind of twisted, you know. It almost makes you wonder when they filmed that scene, was that not even there? Or do the people walking by not even know that that's there? Like, do you keep people, like, people are able to go about their days normally because it's, maybe that's something they added in post. Or maybe it's just like, no, they were given the direction of, don't pr pretend like you don't see. I don't know. It's just like the, the casualness of it. Because the only one who actually took notice of it when he was driving was Ingu, so... But I love the whole situation of like, no, 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 no. Like, I need a ton of cocaine. Let's do business. Yada, yada, yada. But um, obviously, ever since he stepped foot in town, uh, Pastor uh, Gion's kept an eye on him, which they kind of knew that from the very beginning. And he caught multiple times seeing that he was being followed. And that was kind of the whole point. So, But eventually, like, Pastor uh, Gion's people, like, roll up. We already knew Bayon from, like, the first episode, but it seems like there's another guy here who he says, like, oh, he was in Colombia handling business at the time, so that's why um, Ingu and um, Yangsu didn't meet him last episode or, you know, a couple months to, like, a year ago or whatever. Either way, 
kind of turns into an interesting confrontation, especially when they throw out the word traitor. And then at that moment, Ingu, uh, Ingu looks and sees the tattoo on Bayun's neck, and it's the same as the people from Chen's. So it's like, okay, so Bayun used to be with Chen, but he ended up trading sides. It's like, why is that? And it's like, huh. So that's why he's kind of like the translator, which I even love that one of um, Pastor Gion's people was like, yo, um, don't you rather work with us anyway? Like, how can you work with business with a language for, with, for the people who don't speak the same language you do? Because it's like, right, they speak Chinese, you speak Korean. Like, shouldn't we Koreans kind of stick together type of thing? Um, but knowing that's definitely going to be interesting about the Bayun situation of like what his whole deal is. Like, why did he start? Well, we kind of go back to the whole cult thing because um, the women are his mules, which they apparently have to like swallow like 10 packs or something like that. Um, cause even, obviously even they get busted, it's still the thing of like, right, your family's going to be taken care of. The men are soldiers, but even they are kind of getting laced with like meth to kind of keep them under control. You know, it's just like, right. He's able to be charismatic plus drugging you and making you super dependent on him. Kind of like lends itself to kind of the brainwashing of the cult and stuff like that. And it's like, oh, and once again, it's not even just a gang. It is a full blown cult. And that's wild. So, and then having Gion step to, uh, he's like, oh, brother Kang. It's like, oh my God. Uh, so I was like praying to God. He's like, you know, a man means that you're like hoping something will happen. You know, and it's like, yeah, and it, and it brought you to my doorstep. So it's like, why are you here, though? Like, why did you come back to uh, uh, Suriname? And it's like, well, I came back to make money. It's like, tell me the truth. And he's just kind of like, who knows? It's like, why the fuck are you here, you son of a bitch? And because um, it's also like, right, you know I am kind of screwed you over. So, like, why are you here? It's like, well, you're the one that kind of summoned me. So... It's definitely going to be interesting to see how, because he has to come up with a good enough excuse to explain, like, how he can put a, aside his issues, because you'd assume that Pastor Gion would know, like, right, you did, um, you you have to know that I'm the one that kind of screwed you over, so, not unless Gion tries to go, like, yeah, it was someone else, uh, Chin and him, it's like, well, also, he's already been dealing with Chin, so that's not a possibility, so... I'm curious, like, how he's going to, like, put that aside. He's like, regardless of anything, I need money to take care of my family, so I'm going to do whatever I have to, even if it means working with you, so. Because how do you get in that guy's good graces? Because he is paranoid. Because it's like, yeah, like, you were locked up, and now you're here. That's a little suspicious. And you you decided to come back here, like, you know. I mean, obviously, if he came back to you directly, that'd be one thing. But he, the fact is, he specifically went to Chin, too, which Chin was like, yo, don't forget, you might be dealing with them, but our deal comes first, so. It's definitely going to be interesting to see where uh, the next episode takes us with all of this. Uh, but really, that's all I'm going to talk about. Till the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, love light to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day, and good day. Bye.